John Hunt. And why in the world is Huntsville named after him? Hey friends, it's Paula Tish, your favorite Huntsville realtor. Today we're going to talk about the history of Huntsville, Alabama and how it got its start. If you like my videos, please like and follow on all the socials, Atlas with Paula, and right here on this YouTube channel. Click that little bell and it'll show up every time there's a new video. Hey, I'm the creator and host of Lily Flag Signal, a Huntsville History Podcast, and today we're going to talk about Huntsville history. In 1805, John Hunt came to what is now called Huntsville. He settled near the Big Spring. When he settled there, he decided to call it Hunt Spring. I guess some people like things named after themselves. I don't understand the draw, but I mean, I guess that's what happened. It's important to remember that indigenous groups, including the Cherokee and Chickasaw, lived in this land that we now call North Alabama for thousands of years prior to John Hunt's arrival. And in terms of white settlers, John Hunt still wasn't the first. There were the Kreiner brothers who lived a little bit north of Huntsville, as well as James Ditto, who lent his name to what we now call Ditto's Landing. Following that, this guy named Leroy Pope came and he decided to buy a bunch of land and he was very wealthy. He bought a bunch of land and he wanted to build and he thought, no, I'm going to change the name to Twickenham, which is after a estate in England. The people of Hunts Spring did not enjoy that very much. You got to remember, this is post-revolutionary war and many of the people that lived in Hunts Spring slash Twickenham had fought in the Revolutionary War. They were not very pro-British and they were not excited about having a place called Twickenham. In the early 1800s, white settlers thought of North Alabama as part of the new American frontier. Land sales were going on in Nashville where people could buy portions of what's now North Alabama, even if that land was already occupied. And so in 1811, when the town became incorporated, they decided to name it Huntsville. Now, an interesting thing about it, the word ville in French actually means town. So it's like Hunt's town. And the idea of naming the city with a French word in it was very popular to people because the French had supported them during the Revolutionary War. So therefore, Hunt's ville. This was also during the lead up to the War of 1812. In fact, in November of 1811, a town charter officially changed the name from Twickenham to Huntsville. However, the name lives on in the historic district downtown, Twickenham. In 1816, Mr. Pope decided to donate land for the courthouse. This became the very first capital of Alabama. How about that? Did you know that, you guys? I didn't know this. I didn't know any of this. So Huntsville became the very first capital of Alabama in 1819. Alabama has had a lot of state capitals. Actually, when it was still a territory, the capital was a now abandoned town called St. Stephen's. Huntsville's first courthouse was completed in 1818 and the city became the capital while the state constitutional convention was in town. We got statehood a year later in 1819. And then the next year, the capital was moved again to Cahaba and then Tuscaloosa and then finally to Montgomery where it is today. Now this is all pre-Civil War. Before the war, Huntsville became a very popular trading center for cotton. We talked about how the Cotton Row was, all the traders brought the cotton there and it was by the river so they could transport the cotton down to the Tennessee River, all the things, right? Check my video out if you missed that. The cotton trade was a really big deal. And so the railroads were built in 1825 that went through the city so they could transport the cotton to the other, other areas. Now jump ahead to the Civil War. 1862, Huntsville gets captured by the Union troops. Why? Because of the railroad. Because the railroad was a, the transportation routes and the troops wanted, the Union troops wanted to take over the railroad so that people could not move about. In 1862, Huntsville was captured by the Union troops for the railroad. Fun fact, there was no battle for Huntsville. When American troops arrived early in the morning, they didn't really meet any resistance. And long story short, Huntsvillians woke up that day to find soldiers in Navy uniforms in charge. Huntsville was a pretty small city of, you know, around 13,000 plus people until after World War II, because we all know what happened then, right? In 1941, the Redstone Arsenal was created and the Rocket Development Center was created, and that is for another time. 
What we now know as Redstone Arsenal was used by the U.S. military for chemical munitions and manufacturing during World War II. After the war ended, there were a few years of decline before it was announced that the rocket teams would be moving to Huntsville. So that's the story of how Huntsville became Huntsville. There's a lot to know about Huntsville's history, and if you want to learn more, you should check out the podcast, Lily Flag Signal. We have new episodes every Monday.